Huh, didn't expect to see one of these, did you? I reinstalled a couple of programs to get this back on the way, and I learned a few new tricks in the process. Now featuring the not-quite-so-triumphant return of KRA's Battle Network Guide. Now 200% more animated! Uh... Yeah. My computer is still not quite fit to record stuff. This piece comes to you from a set of video clips I found on my original hard drive that I recorded for reasons unknown. A complete guide to the Asteroid Comp in Battle Network 4. Of course, if you found my duo guide helpful, then this probably won't be of much use to you. Work with what you have, I guess. In any case, let's get this show on the road. After a long string of virtuous side quests, we come to the final annoyance the main story has to offer. And it's the granddaddy of them all. The Doom and Death Asteroid Cyberworld puzzle is what I'd like to call a one-way dwarf maze. Walk over the tiles in order from the lowest number of pips to the highest. After you pass over a tile, a planet will appear, forming a wall so you can't backtrack. If you step on any in the wrong order... Yeah, have to start again. Oh, and it's on a timer. I'm not sure if it's gauged by steps or real time or what, but if you don't hit all the panels fast enough... Yep, you have to do it all again. Sounds fun, right? Oh, and did I mention, the random encounters are still on while you run. Just a thing to make you lose your bearings. The best solution I've been able to come up with was to repeat to yourself which direction you were running, and then try to finish the battle as quickly as possible if you can't escape. Once you finally manage to pass over all the panels, the door to the next room opens, and you never have to run the course again until you decide to start with the next difficulty. Catastrophic save failures notwithstanding, of course. So, let's start at the beginning. Asteroid 1 comp is fairly easy, only three panels to activate. Being the introduction to the puzzle, no surprise. There's plenty of breathing room, so even a roundabout route won't bring about the huge magnetic disturbance, unless you're really dawdling. You'll find the battle panels are commonly of the unbreakable metal variety, with the occasional cracked panel tossed in. As you make your rounds, you'll be intercepted by familiar viruses the likes of Weather, Shrimpy, and Magtech, each at their EX levels. Circle makes his debut here as well, so you can start picking up Circle Gun series chips. All of these guys are impeded by holes and obstacles, so Crack Count or Rock Cube can be advisable additions to the folder depending on which version you play. Things start getting a little tricky in Asteroid 2. The time is still relatively lax, but running through the four panels will take a little bit of plotting. The first visible path is rarely the best to take, as the path is dotted with several annoying one-way roads. Four more viruses join the party here, three of which are familiar from the early game. 
Billy EX, Gaia EX, and Melody EX. Whether it leaves in exchange for New Cotton or Bomb Boy, allowing you a chance at Boy Bomb Chips, and loads of fun with Junk Soul if you're playing Blue Moon. Red Sun has no reliable counters, Fire Soul and Surf Soul being the best, but not great, options to get around the Rick Bombs. If you don't have any of those, holes and obstacles will stop them in their tracks, but you'll want something that could bypass obstacles if you actually want to delete them. Taking another step up in difficulty, the penultimate puzzle will leave you looping around and doubling back on yourself a bit to get to the four panels. Asteroid 3's timer is pretty strict, so you may be seeing the black hole a couple of times if you let up on the speed. In addition to what we saw on Asteroid 2, you'll be weeding through Windbox and Walla EX. The walruses are sometimes paired with Circle, making for some frustrating linear dodging, so stay alert. And now, the finale. Asteroid Comp 4 is what I believe to be Battle Network 4's crowning moment of- OH MY GOD THEY CAN STOP! This area is extremely unforgiving. You're given just barely enough time to hit all five panels before the timer runs out. If you get hung up in a corner or something, you might as well go ahead and sequence break to reset the timer or head off for the blue mystery data because chances are you're not going to make it. Cut the corners tight, but be careful not to catch yourself on them. This is still the only route I know that works, and I've run this course at least seven times in the past. I haven't beaten the whole game twice over and all. Yeah, I'm apparently a masochist. Anyway, everything in here you've seen in the previous rooms. When you finally clear this torturous puzzle, the door opens to duo. Laser Man's not gonna let you in without a fight, though. But that's another guide for another day. So, um, yeah. It's pretty obvious I hate the final scenario of the game. In order to complete the game 100%, you'll be running this course three times. Nah. And I guess that'll cover it. I'd give you my usual closing words, but I'm afraid they're not quite accurate, what with my being almost completely unable to do any recording at all. I say almost, because I do have one option, however much I don't like it. I can record Battle Network's 2, 4 Red Sun, and 5 Team Proto Man, but the videos look a bit choppy and a little faster than the norm, oddly enough. I'll go ahead and take suggestions for them for a little while if you guys are okay with that little recording flaw. 
but I can't make any guarantees I'll be able to follow through with them in the near future. Other circumstances are conspiring against me at the moment. Well, in any case, until next time, practice, stay sharp, and most importantly, have fun.